Welcome here. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at uh, finding out what hurts your ported box or your subwoofer or whatever speaker box that you like to listen to is tuned to. So if that's uh, what you're after, you're in the right place. Before we even get set up or move over to your speaker, you want to make sure that you've got uh, some kind of way of getting a frequency over to your system. Now I'm going to be using a frequency generator. Uh, you don't need any other tools other than that, but you do need a way to connect this app up to your home theater setup. So whatever that is for you, uh, figure that out, I guess, <laughs> on how to hook that up. Mine's got Bluetooth capabilities, so I'm just going to Bluetooth it up and connect, and then we're, uh, I'll show you how to find out the frequency of your port. All right, so I've got everything uh, powered up at my uh, home theater setup here, and the uh, first thing you're going to do once you get here is turn off any speaker channels that you're not going to be testing or not going to be wanting to try. Once you've got them turned off, uh, you can see if I kind of see which ones I've got here, kind of by going down. We're just going to test this box uh, to start out with, then we'll test the uh, Polk Audio RTI A7s, and then I'll go uh, show you the same thing over at the subwoofer there. So the process for the testing is going to be the same in every scenario. First thing you're going to want to do once you've got that hooked up and connected is select a hertz of 20 and that's where we're going to start. I mean anything lower than that uh, doesn't really matter a whole heck of a lot. I mean anything lower than that I doubt there's going to be any sub boxes that are tuned below 20 hertz. You can go lower if you want. I'm going to start at 20. Now I should also mention here, if you can go is direct to the source that is better. So in the case of most of my audio, it goes through the Marantz receiver first, then it gets bumped up by the Rotel for most of my listening. So you'll want to go directly through the Rotel or whatever that last step is, if you can, to keep that signal as pure as possible. Okay, now that we've got everything connected, uh, make sure your volume first is really, really low. Get that volume right down. Then uh, start with a hertz of 20, and then we're going to slowly bring that volume up. I should put a disclaimer out there. You can blow stuff up doing this. So start with your volume really low and at your own risk. All right, so there's my 20 hertz. And we're going to start to play that tone. This is now going through the speaker, and you can't hear anything yet because the volume is super low. Then what you're going to want to do is look at the woofers and make sure that they're within their limits. Just don't exercise them too much, but they should be moving pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'll see if I can capture it on the video. I'm not really sure how that's gonna end up turning out if you guys will be, end up seeing it because of uh, the speed of which they're moving and the uh, frequency or the FPS of which I'm shooting at. So we'll see what I can do for you. Okay, so now that you've got them moving to what you feel is a safe limit, what you're going to end up doing now is take that app and just incrementally go up with your frequency until it stops moving. Once it stops moving, kind of note that number and then continue on until you should see it start moving again. So let's kind of go through. Uh, I'll show you kind of what that looks like and I'll zoom back in on that woofer. So you can see at 36 hertz, it looks like that thing completely stops moving. So that is going to be where the port is doing most of the work and the sub is going to be doing the least amount of work. So that's what the box is going to be ported to. To confirm, just keep going up and you should see that woofer start moving again. So as you can see, somewhere between 36, 38 hertz, we can't see that thing moving at all. So that is going to be the frequency that that box is actually ported to. Uh, a little tip to make it as easy as possible, a little speck of dust or a little thing that's a different color is probably the easiest way to see when that thing has really stopped moving, if you can focus in on that. This one ends up being actually exactly where it's currently tuned to. So I'm pretty impressed with that. 
between 36 and 38 is what kind of this test shows. And my design was uh, supposed to put it around 38, I think, is the last time I've uh, adjusted port size. Now, that was kind of a lot of back and forth. So I'll do it again for uh, the speaker up top here. We'll find out what that box is ported to and see if it actually ended up uh, being where we set it up. Now, because that speaker moves a whole heck of a lot more, it's a lot easier to see on that one, I'm sure. Uh, so 28 hertz is kind of the number that looks like there for uh, that one. Now, those are the two boxes I made. So let's do two unknowns here. We'll do the RTI A7s, and then I'll actually go to the subwoofer as well, and we'll check that out. Now, as I'm just looking here, it looks like 40 hertz is where that box is ported to. This one's a little tougher because it's got two different ports. It's got the small port at the top, and it's also got the big port at the bottom, and uh, it's really making it harder to kind of pinpoint it. But to me, it looks like 40 hertz. I don't know, we'll probably be able to see better once I post this video, just because of the way that uh, the frames per second kind of does its own thing with hertz. It, affects how you guys see the speaker movement and how I see the speaker movement on the video versus what I'm actually seeing. Anyway, uh, the sub should be a heck of a lot easier. Let's give that a try and see if uh, that method works there. Now I should have also said earlier you also want to kind of feel the port to make sure the port is moving a ton of air. That's essentially the other thing that you're doing too. Watch till the speaker stops and the air that should be coming out of the port should be a ton. So 30 hertz looks like the uh, subwoofer, that's where that one's at. It's moving an absolute monster load of air and you can't see it moving or at least I can't see it moving. I'm kind of curious to see how the video is going to show uh, this method. But uh, yeah, that's pretty easy. A uh, quick and easy way to find out what hertz that your uh, box is tuned to and if you've achieved what you've wanted. In the case of me, uh, every time I've tested my boxes uh, using WinISD, the frequency has matched up exactly with what uh, I've kind of showed on the test after I test the box and hook the whole thing up. One other thing I would like to say to you before I go here quickly, the next video up is going to be ground issues and if you've got any kind of like a bzzz or a hum or something going on in your speakers. When I did this test the first time, I found a couple of hums and I did find a couple of ground issues that I was able to fix and none of the methods that I found online worked. Anyway, I'm going to go through that. That's going to be a video all on its own that's going to be showing up on the side here as soon as that is done because I'm sure that there's other people that that's going to help as well. Till next time, we'll see you again.